Ladies and gentlemen, the day has come. The biggest update in old school RuneScape history. If you read the title of this video and you play old school RuneScape, then you probably know what I'm going to talk about today. If you don't play old school RuneScape, then you probably think, oh no, Jagex have done it again, right? The evolution of combat 2.0. Microtransactions? New old school RuneScape when? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Don't worry, it's neither of those. But old school RuneScape is having an evolution of its own. Jagex have been working on super top secret project rebalance and the biggest changes from this have finally hit the live servers. Okay, it's not super top secret. Jagex have been announcing this to players for about half a year now, but it sounds cool. So I'm going to go through this huge update and cover some of the curveballs that Jagex have just kind of thrown in last minute. Let's get started. Project Rebalance in a nutshell. Jagex's attempt to improve the features of old school RuneScape's game systems without fundamentally changing the way they play. AKA, no thank you, Mr. Evolution of Combat. One of these big improvements that I've covered in a previous video was NPC weaknesses, specifically expanding on existing weaknesses and introducing bigger, newer weaknesses. So strap in, because as you can see, we've got quite a lot to get through. Starting with magic changes. Well, elemental weaknesses are finally here. Previously, if an NPC was weak to magic in general, it wouldn't lead to much gear diversity. Use the highest level spell or the best staff and gear you have and off you go. But elemental weaknesses have completely shaken this up. Air weaknesses include barrows, Kriara, ghost skeletons, or by Jagex's definition, anything that's made up of wobbly air. Now for air weaknesses, the standout here is Barrows. For a typical new account, you wouldn't start doing Barrows until you get your first powered staff, being the Iban staff, and then made more efficient later on with a Warp Scepter or Trident. But now you could just pick up an air staff and off you go. But hey, you don't have to take my word for it because I wanted to test it for myself. I think this is an appropriate early game setup. Look at that. Straight out the gates, noticing that huge increase in damage. A 22, and that's not a max hit. Bear in mind, I'm using air blast here. This is a level 41 spell and it hits like a truck. It is so accurate as well. Yeah. Yeah, Jagex, you have done a good job with this. This feels great. I'm not convinced that the air weakness of Kriara is enough for it to overtake the current methods of doing the boss, especially given that the weakness is only 30%. But let me know if you've tried this out. Water weaknesses are kind of what you expect. Great against anything that looks hot. Chromatic dragons, including the King Black Dragon, most demons, pyre fiends, fire giants, even the giant mole is weak to a little splish splash. Now the chromatic dragon weakness is interesting, but I'm not sure it's gonna be enough to compete with their ranged weaknesses, which I will get onto in a minute. But this will be more prevalent later down the line because we now know that the Dragonbane magic wand passed the group boss polls and will be coming into the game. This will make it a much more competitive option and I'm sure unless you're using the best range gear, it's probably gonna be the go-to. The other NPCs here that I'm a little bit surprised about are demons because sure, water makes sense. You know, holy water, splash it on the demons. Demons are uh, kind of hot, I guess. Jagex have just announced a bunch of demon bane weapons coming as part of the rewards for the Wild Gothic Sleeps quest. And these demon bane weapons look amazing. Now, are they going to be outperformed or just be very similar to using water spells? It's all getting a little bit tricky to navigate, so we'll have to wait and see until they come out how they stack up. Earth weaknesses include all metal dragons, water fiends, and worms. Earth weaknesses, as of this initial update, are really lacking. Sure, a metal dragon's task might be somewhat more bearable now, but I really hope Jagex add more to the list of NPCs with an earth weakness. There's just not much to talk about right now. Lastly, we have fire weaknesses. Bugs. Pretty much all types of bugs. Spiders, scarabs, vespula, cowfight, kefri. Anything that's also remotely made of ice or has ice in the name is also weak to fire. And a user on Reddit posted this massive 70 hit splat, which wasn't even a max hit, just one 
one-shotting an ice giant. And of course, the big one is Zora, now also weak to fire. With this weakness being a massive 50%, it really opens up some earlier options to approach Zora for Iron Men who have usually waited to get a trident. But of course, it's also going to make some of the better setups with a Staff of the Dead or Nightmare Staff even better. I've included the link that Jagex have provided with all the monsters that have had some weakness tweaks, so that is in the description if you want to see that. But if you're in-game and you're ever unsure what a monster might be weak to, then all you have to do is switch your spellbook away from the standard spellbook to the lunar spellbook to cast monster examine to then switch back to the standard spell or you could just check the wiki page it's been updated with all of the weaknesses which is super handy now something that wasn't explicit in the original project rebalance blog but was kind of teased upon is how there's always been a strength disparity between fire spells and air spells fire spells have just always been more powerful and that kind of makes sense, right? Wrong. Wrong. Not anymore. Jagex have straight up capped elemental spell scaling. So now Airstrike has the same base max hit of eight as Fire Strike does. And the same goes for all the other tiers of magic spells. Of course, different NPCs have different levels of weaknesses to those elements. So where the Ice Demon in the Chambers of Zeric has a 150% weakness to fire, Vespula only has a 50% weakness to fire. With every 1% of an NPC's weakness contributing to a 1% damage and accuracy boost, this means our max hit against the Ice Demon would be around 77, whilst only being 50 on Vespula. So taking advantage of these elemental weaknesses makes a huge difference. And while these changes aren't enough to compete with the likes of a shadow and max magic gear, it does massively close the gap between the two, all without having to spend over a billion GP on the Tumacan Shadow. We can already see that weapons that take advantage of the standard spellbook are rising in price. The Nightmare Staff, the Harmonized Orb, the Kodai Wand, and the Staff of the Dead. Honestly, it's great to see a bit of a shakeup in the magic meta. It has just been really stale for so long now. Okay, I hope you took notes because now we're moving on to ranged weaknesses. Ranged has been split down into heavy, standard, and light. Jagex have said that the initial set of NPCs that have had their ranged weaknesses adjusted will mostly bring crossbows back into the meta where things like the Bofa and Twisted Bow have just massively taken over most other options. So a couple thing with these range weaknesses. The first one being that the notable NPC defense changes just kind of reinforce a lot of the things players were already doing. It's quite clear that what Jagex have done with these is give themselves a little bit of space in the future with further creatures or bosses or whatever to flex around those weaknesses. I'm not going to spend any more time going through ranged because it hasn't made huge differences. There were also some melee changes, but these are minor and have really just exaggerated existing weaknesses like stab to draconic creatures, crush to gargoyles, and even some extra slash effectiveness against the duke. All right, buckle in ladies and gents, because we are going to go through the more controversial changes now. Now, item adjustments. Before we do though, usual shout out to my subscribers, channel members, everyone who supports me. If you're not subscribed, it's totally free and it might just give you that little RNG boost you were looking for. Okay, item adjustments. We've known it was coming for some time, but finally the occult necklace has been nerfed significantly, down to 5% magic damage from 10, and magic damage has instead been spread out across a lot of other items. Ancestral robes now giving 9% for the whole set instead of the 6% previously, and Virtus Robes giving 6% rather than their 3%. These we kind of expected. They're locked behind harder content, and they have a hefty price tag, so it now reflects that accurately. Here is where it gets interesting, though. Infinity Robes will now give a 1% magic damage boost per piece. And the same goes for these other armor sets. This is actually huge for mid-game players, even early game Iron Men, honestly. It does feel that the standout set here is actually the Aram set from Barrows because not only will this whole set now give you a 3% magic damage boost, but it also boasts the highest all-round defensive stats of any magic gear in the game. And one of the more infamous magic items that has finally seen an upgrade the eternal boots now i joked about these being the most underwhelming piece of magic gear some time ago now and they've been given a one percent magic damage boost one <laughs> percent 
Yeah, well, that's fixed that problem, right? Sensational. All right, there were some other magic item changes, but I'm not going to go through all of them. I'd link the blog post in the description because magic prayers also got a buff. With Mystic Law and Might getting small damage increases to encourage the use of using earlier prayers, but also Augury will now give a solid 4% damage boost. These prayer changes are great, yes, but listen, there's something even bigger. Defense lowering weapons. The Dragon Warhammer has kind of stood at the top of these for some time now, but that time is over. Move out the way because the Elder Maul has finally been changed. This bad boy has a new special attack that lowers the target's defense by a massive 35%, officially crowning it the best defense lowering weapon against high defense NPCs. And look at that special attack. Is that not the best thing? Good shit, Jagex, good shit. Speaking of the Dragon Warhammer though, it has finally seen its drop rates adjusted slightly. Down from a 1 in 5,000 drop rate to a 1 in 3,000, which is a hefty change. For new Iron Men, this is an absolute blessing. And for those of you Iron Men out there who have already done this grind, you're probably a little bit salty about this change. The Inquisitor set from the Nightmare Boss has also been changed and will now provide a 2.5% accuracy and damage boost per piece when paired with the mace. And its drop rate has also been increased, up to a 1 in 420 drop from a 1 in 600. Other drops from the Nightmare Boss have also seen their rates increased, which is great because if you've ever had to do this boss, if you've ever done this grind, then you know that this is modernized torture. This is digitized waterboarding. Oh. The Void Waker nerf was also meant to be in this round of item adjustments, but the community were pretty opposed to it, so Jagex have shelved it for now. And the last thing I'm going through today are combat adjustments. Now, I'm not going to cover all of these, but there are two combat adjustments that fundamentally change the game. First of all, Jagex have removed the delay on auto casting spells that existed for some reason. No more manual casting spells for that slight DPS boost. No more sweating for minimal gains. It finally just makes sense. The second big change is to minimum hits. Previously, when you successfully rolled an accuracy check, your damage would vary from any value between zero and your max hit. Unless, of course, you totally fail all accuracy checks, in which case you're always going to hit a zero. That hasn't changed. But what has changed is that if you pass this accuracy check, instead of your damage varying anywhere between zero and your max hit, your damage will be rolled between one and your maximum hit. In a nutshell, this just means that you'll be hitting fewer zeros, which is great for new accounts. They'll be getting a significant DPS boost. Although, am I the only one that thinks that hitting continuous zeros on goblins is a rite of passage, a stage that everyone should have to go through. Now, because of the way DPS has been redistributed to account for this increase of minimum hit, it does have some implications in other areas of the game, but I'm not getting into detail that is a separate conversation. Before we wrap up today, these are huge changes for old school RuneScape. There are always going to be people out there who don't like change, but without change, this game will die. That's unfortunately the reality. A lot of people out there have already said how positive of a change this is. It's that period of experimentation and discovery all over again, and that's great. When it comes to Project Rebalance's influence on the future of old school, Jagex have teased a number of times that they want to expand on the reward space with new items that cater to these weaknesses. So clearly, we're not heading anywhere near the evolution of combat, but we are heading in a direction of our own. That might have been the deepest shit I have ever said. Buzz them, buzz them.